Well, time to shift focus now to some sectorial calls from uh, J.P. Morgan. In their report, J.P. Morgan says that they have a positive call on steel as they expect domestic price cut cycle to end uh, soon, likely. And they also have a bit of a cautious view on cement. While on crude, they have cut their forecast from around $80 per barrel to around $74 per barrel. Spinnikin Parikh, Executive Director uh, Metals, as well as uh, Mining, Oil and Gas and Cement, well, joins us on the show. Hi, Pinnikin. Always good to speak to you. Well, we're going to be focusing on uh, steel, cement, as well as on oil and gas. Let's start off with steel first. You've been quite positive on it. Uh, but domestic prices, steel prices, are at a bit of a premium in comparison to imported steel. So the street is bracing by for a price cut. Could you tell us what could that quantum be? Are you baking that in? Uh, so good morning, Nigel. So we do expect a uh, price cut in July, but our view is uh, that we are probably at the end of the steel price cut cycle in the domestic markets. Uh, Chinese domestic HRC export prices have fallen to $550 a ton, uh, but seem to be stabilizing at those levels for the last few weeks. Uh, and incrementally from here, news flow should improve in China. Uh, domestically, we are at the weak point of demand uh, given the monsoons, but underlying demand remains very strong. Uh, historically, we have seen that uh, in the past when domestic demand tends to be strong, uh, domestic steel prices do tend to be at a small premium uh, to imported prices. Uh, this is just because of the ready availability premium that is there. Uh, so overall, yes, there should be a price cut in July, but uh, probably we are at the end of the cycle, at least for now. What kind of a quantum we could look at? Um, so I haven't done the numbers, but it should be a small price cut. Uh, we are unlikely to see a very large one. So at $550, the landed prices uh, out of China works out to around 53, 54 thousand rupees per ton. All right. Uh, but again, uh, the other point that the street is uh, working with is prices have been, uh, you know, a, a little bit softish in line with what's going on in the globe. But the positive is that cooking coal costs have declined substantially. So raw material cost is lower, though your selling price as well is lower. What kind of spreads are you working with in comparison to quarter four, say for quarter one and quarter two? Uh, g give us a brief number. Uh, sure. So at this point of time, uh, obviously for the steel companies, what has helped is the sharply lower coking coal price. Uh, however, there is a lead and lag. Uh, so essentially, um, whether it's a steel or a cement company, there tends to be a two to four month lag before the uh, spot prices flow through to the PNL. Uh, seasonally, 1H volumes tend to be lower than 2H. Uh, so there is uh, negative operating leverage which comes through. Uh, if you look at spot steel spreads, uh, essentially spot steel prices minus uh, iron ore and minus coking coal cost. Uh, implied spreads are broadly stable versus the March quarter uh, uh, at this point of time versus what the companies reported. So uh, we haven't done the numbers, uh, but it looks like uh, it's a relatively healthy operating environment for the Indian steel companies uh, versus what the markets had feared when steel prices started falling. Okay, all right. The other problem is Chinese exports that spiked up to an annualized rate of closure on 90 million tons. Uh, that's a worry, right, when China starts exporting more. But you believe that this number will get rationalized to what levels? Uh, so a couple of things over here. Obviously, the Chinese net steel export surge, uh, so we, it went from a 4 million ton monthly run rate to around 7.5 million tons in the last three months. Uh, that is a clear negative. Uh, but what we need to also keep in mind is the sharply lower steel exports out of Russia and Ukraine. So to that extent, uh, the global steel supply has not really moved as much as what uh, the Chinese net export number will suggest. Uh, second is on the margin at some, uh, there will be some positive news flow uh, in terms of whether it's a stimulus, whether it's a, uh, you know, a set of measures which uh, positively impact demand. Uh, so Chinese steel exports uh, sequentially should be lower in the second half versus uh, what, we have seen, uh, what we have seen in the last three to four months. Uh, so that should also stabilize uh, sentiment and prices. Mm. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Pinakin, hi, good morning. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, so uh, that's uh, metals and steel uh, for, for the viewers. But, you know, in order of preference, you like metals, then you like energy, and then last you like the least liked sector is cement, and we can talk about the others as well. But just a quick word on energy and oil marketing companies in particular. Uh, you must have uh, sort of, I just want to get your views on uh, what BPC are proposing, which is uh, approval for a rights issuance. 
what do you make of it? I mean, uh, uh, is this something sure, which Prashad. is going to be negative for shareholders? Is it required at this stage because arguably profitability has improved quite a bit? Uh, sure, Prashant. So we would not uh, comment on specific companies uh, and what their proposals are. Uh, overall, we do believe uh, that uh, Indian energy companies would need to step up capex uh, related to climate change. Uh, uh, at this point of time, there are not many details available in terms of what are the spending plans uh, and how do they uh, plan to go about it. No, but uh, if all, all the oil marketing companies were to do it, would that change your view here? Uh, so again, since we do not have any details, right, uh, at this point of time, what we do know is that uh, the refining environment broadly remains very supportive, uh, especially given the arbitrage barrels that uh, the uh, you know, Indian companies are sourcing. Uh, implied marketing margins are also very strong. It allows companies to recoup uh, the losses that they incurred last year. Uh, it should also allow net debt reduction. Uh, so at this point of time, we have visibility on the near-term earnings. Uh, beyond the near-term capital allocation, is something where we do not have enough clarity as to how the companies will go on spending. Again, these are very long-term plans, uh, so very difficult to say uh, if there will be any immediate impact on this year or next year's financials. Mm. Uh, do you think we're likely to see a retail price cut uh, by the oil marketing companies, especially in the run-up to the elections? And if it does come through, will it hurt? Um, so at... Uh, yeah, sure. So if you look at what the gross margins are across the sector, they are at very elevated levels. There is a historical average and the companies are running far ahead of the historical averages. Uh, so at some point of time, uh, there will uh, or there should be a retail price cut. Uh, in terms of timing, uh, very difficult to say whether it is A month or B month or C month. Uh, what, uh, what we like is that uh, the companies are being allowed or the sector is being allowed to recoup the losses that they incurred last year. Uh, but there should be a normalization of prices. Uh, at some point of time uh, in the second half of this fiscal year. Okay, well, uh, we'll uh, leave it there, Pinakin. It's a pleasure having you with us here. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, and uh, thank you once again for being here on CNBC TV this morning.